Houston. I can hear you. I you can, can hear, hear me. I can hear I can hear you, Brandon. And ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> let me be the first to welcome you all to the fucking do it cast. It is the most sensational, virational, expectational, <laughs> something else <laughs> that brands with ational <laughs> podcast that your ears can put inside of your head. Thank now, you. I understand that a lot of people, they send their ears out on audio expeditions. Think of it like 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 a like a walkabout but for <laughs> for your ear holes. And many people have come back. And they have come to me and they have said Brandon B brother Brand, friend, Brandon Chalmers Brand. they said I have found the motherland. And I said lay it on me. And they said it is and believe it or not the fucking do a cast. Now I am over here with the vapors just blowing easterly winds across my face to calm myself because I am, for the lack of a better way to put it, verklempt. I couldn't even understand it. Preach, brother, preach. Preach. <laughs> Church, I'm gonna blow it away. Woo! Uh, that's right, ladies and gentlemen, you have found the fucking do it podcast, part of the hard knock media podcasting network. That's N O C as in nerds of color. You can find us and many other fine podcasts at hardknockmedia.com. You're seeing the URL above and below us. If you're seeing us on the YouTubes or on the Facebook, I don't know why I post to Facebook, but I do it anyway. They, they came out with a whole bunch of like data years ago saying that like so many people are, are moving to Facebook for video. So all of these media companies switched all of their, their media to like um, online video and now they're all out of business because Facebook juked the numbers. Well, I'm not really surprised, but I also know that Facebook is a nice way for people to see it. Yeah. So if you don't actually subscribe to us on YouTube, which genuinely you should. You should. Nothing but Like gold. and subscribe. <laughs> like and subscribe. <laughs> Where you can find videos that have this face, have that face, wow. and sometimes that face without this face, <laughs> which gets a ton more views than the videos with this face and that face. I mean, which I'm yeah. not saying that I'm dragging <laughs> down your numbers, Jamie, but boy, howdy do I feel like I'm dragging down your numbers. If, if I gave a shit about numbers. <laughs> I wouldn't be doing any of this. <laughs> yep, that's I, right. Your friends I, here at the fucking do a cast yeah. caring about numbers since mm, nope, never. Like I would not have started web comics if I gave a shit about numbers. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, I, I'm I. I that's I, not true. You would have just started a web comic in 1999. That's how. <laughs> that's true. That's yeah, yeah. It, You'd have done what Penny Arcade did, which is just the easiest thing to do. <laughs> start early. Start, start early. Start early, right. Start early, start or be the oatmeal. Early. Like, it, it's one or the other. Like, yeah. you, you can't... You can't... You can't... Uh, you can't start late and then expect to succeed, <laughs> I guess. I don't know. We, sure. we, have, we have friends who started after Penny Arcade who've, who've done pretty well for themselves, but uh, I do not count yeah. myself among them in terms of webcomics. So. <laughs> but they ain't Penny Arcade. That's true. It's very true. I mean, Penny Arcade, I isn't, Penny Arcade isn't even Penny Arcade anymore. They're, they're like a whole media conglomerate thing going on. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, God, that sounds terrible. <laughs> Sorry, what are we talking about? I, I don't know, Brandon. Uh, it, is a, it is a new week. We are almost yeah. in May. I'm, I'm not sure when I'm posting this. It might be May when this goes okay. up. Okay. 
Uh, maybe okay. not. Okay, but uh, gotcha, you gotcha. Um, Q, Q Timberlake memes of it's gonna be May. It, no, no, um, it's going to be May Moa. Oh, that's right. It's going to be May Moa. Uh, I haven't made a prompt list. I haven't. I haven't done it yet. But I'm gonna, <laughs> even if it's just Jason Momoa does this. Jason Momoa and his Leica collection. Jason Momoa climbing rocks. Jason Momoa climbing rocks with his Leica collection. Jason Momoa climbing a rock that is just made of Leicas. I mean, it's... Honestly, like, we could just do an entire month that is just an appreciation post of Jason Momoa and just call it May Moa. May like, Moa. you don't have to draw. Just find your favorite <laughs> Momoa moments yeah. or Mo moments. May, May moment, May mo, mo, yeah. mo, mo, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mo moments. Yeah. I, this needs to happen. I don't care who uses the hashtag, but it's, it's Asian Pacific Islander month in May. Uh, is it? It is. Yeah. So nice. my birth, my birth month is also uh, Asian Pacific awareness month, but also May Moa. So like Justin Timberlake is okay. fine. That, I mean, it's going to sure. be May. That's fine. But I think it's much yeah. more important that we start May Moa. Because 2020 needs something stupid, like just yeah, it needs it needs something better. We all need an uplifting moment. Our feeds are nothing but awful memes about the virus, yeah, and fucking the news, yeah. Jesus, and then just everyone essentially sitting at home. Being sad. trying to to be not so sad. Like yeah. I do appreciate at least most of my personal internet feed is like, boy, it's, is it fucking, is it Tuesday? Yeah. Okay. It's, it's <laughs> Tuesday guys. We, we sure do got this. We, we, we got a we Tuesday. Got, we got this. Yeah. It's, Ooh, it's, boy. uh, yeah, it's, it's not good. And, uh, may, may is going to continue, uh, the, yeah. The um, yeah, um, I think realistically, Timberlake needs to re-record it and just stare blankly into a camera and go, "It's May." <laughs> <laughs> just the slow pan, the slow zoom. It's just a slow zoom. Yeah. Oh wait, I think I can. I can emulate. No, I'm going to knock off my computer. No, please don't <laughs> we'll do that. Do that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, I believe if, if, if this podcast accomplishes nothing else in its entire run, if we're able yeah. to spark off May Moa, yeah, I, I will feel like we have done something. Yeah. I don't know what. I, I'm not really clear either. Yeah. Whether, whether it's an art challenge or just the hashtag May Moa, just an appreciation thing, just like sexy yeah. thirst posts about him or just like i'm i'm good with all of these things because yeah. that guy is a ray of sunshine in an otherwise cloudy day he has a line of climbing gear from so ill he's got i, I know he's got the he's got the um the shoes he's got like the the bags and stuff it's like it's either uh, a black you can get his gear in black or like a, a nice pink, pink. It's not a hot yeah. pink, but it's like a, a slightly like a, desaturated pink, but it's really nice. I was going to say, yeah. Also, I saw them post up the other day, uh, and Momoa did it as well. They're also doing face masks with his tattoo going down the one side of it. Fuck. So I think those get released this week, maybe. Um, so uh, and there was yeah. like multiple sizes and everything else like that. So That's awesome. Um, yeah, I'm going to keep an eye on, out on that. I may splurge for that. Uh, T... Is it T Hub, T Fury? One of those T-shirt places. They're they're doing masks too now. So like you could put nice. your artwork on a mask, and every mask sold, they're going to donate one to the first responders. Interesting. I, even even if we get through this, I think wearing a mask is going to be more of a thing. So like you might as well get a fancy one. You might as well get a, a neat looking one. You know? Yeah. I, I, from from here on out, I think we're going to be like you see in Asia, where you have people walking wear, walking around on masks. Just on a Tuesday. I, I think that's just going to happen. I think you're going to see much more of that these days. And I'm for it because it'll look cool and it'll be great. And everybody <laughs> can pretend like they're ninjas. Who doesn't want to yeah. be a ninja? I, I got to be honest with you. We're gonna, I'm going to need Tim Apple to step up because my facial recognition software on my phone. Oh, fuck. Yeah. 
Not so much. Like, I don't know if we need to get more specific and it needs to start retinal scanning me or something yeah, like yeah, that yeah, yeah. or what, but yeah. the facial recognition, not so much anymore. It doesn't, doesn't work anymore. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> dude, every time I go, I go grocery shopping and I'm one of those people where I put a, a list up on my phone, I end up, I look at my phone, my phone yells at me, then I enter the passcode, then I go ahead and do it. And I guess I really need to just start like setting my power settings when I go out to like not go to sleep for an extended period of time. So this way I don't have to keep doing this over and over again. Yeah. But yeah, there's, there's, uh, I know. And first world problems is I complain about having to wear my face mask as I go grocery (laughs) shopping, but it's, it's fine. Honestly, it's the calmest rant I could make right now about everything going on. (laughs) It's it's something better to rant about first world problems, even though it sounds like something stupid to rant about. It's better than real shit because real shit gets sad real quick. Yeah. Yeah. Uh Real shit. Real shit gets real sad. Uh, oh. I, I don't think my, I think I have a old ass phone, so I don't have the facial recognition, but it has the oh, thumbprint the scan, thumb? oh, okay. but I don't use that. I just use the, the good old password because <laughs> cause yeah. I'm, I'm dumb. I am not willing to give Tim Apple my biometric data, even though he probably has got it. He has it. <laughs> yeah, sir. I, I, they made an emoji of your face. I, I, I've, I've been on a call with you. <laughs> That's they true. know what you look like, bro. That's true. Like, That's true. Know this. this. Yeah. The, the iPad has definitely scanned my face front ways, back ways, sideways, up, up yeah. my nose. It's just, yeah, mm. it, it, it knows you. It it uh <laughs> it is <V'ger. laughs> Uh All right, Brandon. Uh, upon what are you geeking this somber evening? Um, so two things. One very short rant. Um, I'd like to give a big shout out to the Maryland Department of Unemployment who decided to change their website over the weekend. Jesus. Um, fuck. Cause a huge backup, have me get in line last night to be able to do my weekly register. By the way, I'm now four weeks uh, unemployed, have not received a check. God um, damn it. I have confirmation that I'm, I'm a proof of benefits, <laughs> haven't received any sort of payment or anything else like that. Um, but I got to sit in line last night on a digital queue. So when I started in line at like 930, I only had 194,000 people ahead of me. Oh, so oh. good on them. Um, had to leave my computer up all night and sleep on the couch. So this way it woke me up and set an alarm for every hour to make sure that I didn't miss it. So at four 45 in the morning, uh, my, my computer chimed, woke me and I managed to fill out my questions. So shout out to you guys for having a rad system. Jesus. Awesome. I mean, please, does, I beg of you pay me. Does like, it, I, <laughs> does it make you feel any sense of, security having that number in well, no like, it's not it's not a number uh, what do you mean like knowing that, that there are that many people unemployed well, no 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 knowing what your number is in the queue like you know the 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 best iron age game ever where we're when no, we're, i gotta be honest with you jamie once you get over like 500 mm-hmm. that number doesn't feel real mm-hmm like you can look at it and you can be like, Oh, it moved 3000 in a minute. Wow. And Jesus. then I found well, out man. after I was staying up thinking, Oh, I'll wait it out. Hopefully it'll be good. That apparently they shut it down for maintenance between 1am and 3am. So you could have slept. <laughs> so yeah. So <laughs> fuck, dude. Thing, things I learn. Um, <laughs> when I set my alarm and I woke at 1 a.m. to go check my status to make sure that I didn't miss my opportunity because if you miss your opportunity, you have to re-put yourself back in and they'll bump you farther up, but who the hell knows when? And I'd like to actually do something during the day, you know, go get groceries, you know, house errands, what have you. You, you don't like babysitting your computer? No, turns out I don't. Come on, man. So, uh, what kind yeah. of millennial so, are you, Brandon I... Look, if it if it genuinely works and it means that things are more organized and that people are actually getting paid for benefits, cool. I'll sit in line all night. I don't care. But genuinely, I beg of you. Like it, it reeked of every last minute fix with every poorly run company I'd ever been a part of. Where it's this eleventh hour, we'll buy new software, and it's like no, 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 no. no, 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 That's, no. The software is not the problem. No. no. So I, no. I don't know. 
I, I hope it works. I, I, I wish no ill will on anyone here. I understand there are a ton of people who are out of work. I understand that the people working unemployment are absolutely overloaded, but yeah. for the love of God, could we please start getting some benefits out to people? Cause hey, uh, if you know COBOL, yeah. you can get employed in the unemployment office, which is kind of weird. I, fine. I'm good with that. <laughs> like I want to work. Yeah. Jesus. Anyway, um, that's so frustrating. yeah, so that's a little, um, a little rant. I don't want to be too aggressive, but also, um, I have been privy to more than one rant by somebody on someone else's Facebook page about a reply to a meme or whatever it is, where they basically just go fucking off about, you know, I want to go back to work and they need to renew the, you know, they need to take down the yada yada. Is that look, I get it. Take it from somebody. I, you're you're hearing somebody who has been out of work, who does not have any income. I left my job. I emptied my four hundred one k, so this way I could actually pay my bills. Oh, shit. I took a thirty percent hit on my four hundred one k that was already down another probably twenty five percent because of the stock market, so that I could pay my bills. So, am I right side up right now? Yeah, I am. But am I happy about it? Hell no. And I shouldn't have had to do it because we should have the fail safes in place. And this system should have been working. Hi, hi. And, 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 and the 1200 is really doing a number. No, the 1200, you know what? I'm not going to be angry at the 1200. The 1200, uh, I, I have set myself up to a way where the house that I purchased, I was intelligent about it, the way I purchased it and I made sure to not overextend myself. So, that was able to cover a month's mortgage. And I'm, I'm genuinely appreciative of that. I, 100%. I'm not going to complain about it. Do I think the idea of that 1200 lasting weeks and weeks and weeks is realistic? Absolutely not. I think that's foolhardy. And I think everyone involved knows it was foolhardy at best. Will I appreciate Except for Mnuchin, directly? that motherfucker. <laughs> Fuck him. Whatever. I don't think he <laughs> believes half the shit that's coming out of his own mouth. God. I, but, I don't, but I'm not going to look a gift horse in the mouth. 1200 is absolutely a huge help. Yeah. It ain't nothing. Like I, yeah. I appreciate that. So I don't want to seem like, I'm, you know, I appreciate it, but going after other people on their Facebook page over a fucking meme is not the way to handle your anger right now. Go take a walk, go do some push ups. go beat up somebody on call of duty, fucking shout into a pillow, yell into the wall, but stop, stop picking a fight with people on the internet because especially people that you know, because once all this is over, people are going to remember you being a fucking shithead. Yeah. And there are more than one person who I have personally spent time with at art fight shows and at conventions who I'm going to fucking find when this is over. What, what are they, what are they memeing about? Is it like, People, people memeing basically like, Hey, uh, you going back to work isn't worth other people dying. Mm. Because people are upset and they want the restrictions taken down. Yeah. And we can't have some sort of, you know, moderate uh, back to work program. We can't, because you can't explain moderation in a meme. Yeah, for sure. And I get it. Like, but it, Facebook is not the way to debate anything. No. And people, people need to work. I mean, people need to make money somehow. Yeah, and I, like, I, I totally get it. And and trust me, like I, I'm sure that people far more intelligent than myself have the ability to work this out in a perfect scenario, but we don't have a perfect scenario. We have a democracy where everyone gets a vote and everyone gets a voice and some assholes are louder than others. And I may disagree with some of the management that's happening, but there's nothing I can do about it other than just try and protect myself and my family and try and weather the storm and try not to be a fucking asshole to other people online. Yeah. But people remember that shit. Ugh. So, yeah. Um, again, I say it at the end of every podcast, but if you don't make it to the end, genuinely, people, please, I beg of you, be kind to each other online. Like, who you are online right now is who you are because we don't get the opportunity to be out and talking to other people. And people will remember that and they will treat you like pieces of shit after yeah. all this is over. Well, and the other, the other problem is that like, uh, when you're, when you're typing something in and when you're reacting to something, it's not the same as talking it out. Like, um, there's inflections and there's body language and there's sarcasm and none yeah. of that translates well to like 
typing because people, a lot of people don't type the way they speak. Um, yeah. I mean, I fucking do because, but a lot of I, people, a lot yeah. of people don't. And when you yeah. engage in somebody with somebody that you disagree with in person, it's a different experience than if it's like keyboard shit. So, well, yeah, I mean, if people are able to be nuanced and people are able to be intimidated and people are able to make a smarter decision because that other person's physically in the room <laughs> and they can make a decision about whether or not they're going to get punched in the face. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's amazing how fucking cock diesel everybody is behind a keyboard. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so anyway, um, but yeah, so that, well, that's a terrible aside, thing to geek on Brandon. <laughs> that is, I know now in the complete inverse of that, let's Ooh. talk about fucking Katamari reroll because oh, there's a Katamari oh, game on switch and I downloaded it and it was fucking great. They had it on sale. Um, I don't know if it's still on sale. I haven't checked the Nintendo store. It was on sale for $10. Oh I think my normally God. It's like 40. Yeah. Oh my God. Um, and at 40 bucks, it's worth it. I understand a lot of, uh, a lot of people are playing animal crossing. Awesome. Good for you guys. I'm glad. Enjoy it. If for some reason you need a break from animal crossing or you want something that's a little more nostalgic or, you know, it, uh, depending on how old you are or, if you're someone a bit older who wants to have their kid play a fun game that has a neat premise and isn't very difficult to understand and isn't difficult to play, but is difficult to master, Katamari <laughs> is the totally great game to learn for that. And it Easy to learn, difficult to things. master. <laughs> right, yeah. Like it, it, it teaches you about size and volume and technique and capability and also the disappointment that comes from the king of the cosmos, who is the world's possibly second worst dad, but also Besides best Goku. dad. <laughs> right, yeah. Just behind Goku is the king of the cosmos, who responds no matter what you end up rolling up in that ball. Yeah. Well, it's okay, I guess, <laughs> but we can do better next time. Which, I, to my understanding, that game is Japanese. The King of the Cosmos is fucking British. I don't care yeah. how <laughs> fucking fight me. like <laughs> Because I feel like every Japanese parent that I have met may have that attitude, but won't necessarily voice it that way. <laughs> it, it's a lot more stoic, uh, stoic disapproval. A Brit would definitely look at you and go, well, all right. <laughs> That's what you want. You're just left with like, is it good enough? Is it not good enough? <laughs> father, father. Right, because like, right, he's, he's too polite to be American, but he's, he's too mouthy <laughs> to, to, to my understanding to be anything but British. Um, and he's not fun, so I know he's not Irish or Scottish. Is, so it, I assume he just has to be English. Like, there's the, no way around it. Is the soundtrack still a banger? The the soundtrack is still a banger. Um, it's just it's fun, and they they snapped to the best of my understanding. They snapped a bunch of levels from a bunch of the different games. But I like it's kind of Mario game. It's, it's so hard good. to fuck up. Yeah, yeah. And they haven't they haven't bothered to okay. So they haven't bothered to update the graphics a ton or anything else like oh, that. That's but fine. Honestly, why would you? I yeah. feel it always feels very stylized. Yeah. But little things that I absolutely love that have changed over time. Like I don't ever remember, like I remember them having cats and then I remember them having dogs. I don't remember them ever having cats and dogs who were paralyzed on the back end and having little half wheelchairs. Oh, that's cool. They're, yeah. Like little, <laughs> little things they add in that are more appropriate for current day society. Uh, yeah. That it's like just this slightly softer hand and more things you recognize. You're like, Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are there, I, God, it's been so long since I played a Katamari game. Are there, are there challenge courses where like you have to get a ball in a certain amount of time or like, are there different game modes and in, in like, um, there, there are, so the, the way that I have been playing it, there's a mode where you take on the other, uh, the, the rest of your family in like challenge modes. I haven't played any of those mm. per se, uh -huh. but the one where you go to earth and basically the King just says, Hey, you start with a ball this size, make a ball this size. Or if you go on and you do like, um, you're trying to make a constellation, like you're trying to make Virgo or something like that. You yeah. go into a level and you have to gather as many women on the ball as humanly possible. Oh, wow. <laughs> so you're, so you're rolling around the area, but yeah, 
you start with a ball that's large enough to pick up, you know, children or, you know, uh, female, uh, you know, dolls, what have you, yada, 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 and then start growing to a large enough thing where you start picking up statues that have women on them and what have you. And all of them are counting. Like, yeah, yeah. Cosmos does not care. Like, <laughs> it's a lady. You're a, woman, a lady fish. Woman, yeah, as far as he's concerned. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> is it female? It counts. Like, <laughs> That's so fun. Man, yeah, so I didn't realize they updated it. That's cool. Oh yeah, it, it's it's good. It's real good. And there are more challenging ones, like uh, when you go to look for Taurus or whatever it is, you have to try and find the largest cow you can, but you can't touch any other cows. You can only get one cow. Oh. So like, the first time I did it, I was rolling away from another cow, thought that I was going to make it through some through something touched a milk carton that had a cow printed on the side of it oh, and no. killed it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it, it's like, oh my God. you can only get one cow. You have 11 minutes. And I'm like, cool. All right. I'll be really slow and selective about what I build and make sure I don't touch any cows. No problem. Oh, Turns man. out the, the term cow, real loose. Real. I wonder if they have it on, they used to have it on iPhone and I hated it because like the, the iPhone controllers were not very good. No, you, you need, you need proper joysticks to be able yeah. to control this. The switch is a great thing for it. But I wonder um, and if a, it, as a lot of people who have kids have switches and stuff like that, I would highly recommend it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, it's in the, uh, it's in the Nintendo store. It absolutely holds up. Um, I was an early adopter. I think PS one version when it came out or whatever it is forever ago. Uh-huh. Um, I, I had it. So I, I get this. I'm here for it. I think you should play it. And That's it's so a fun. hell of a lot of fun. Yes. I'm going to have to, Hmm. We have the Buy PS2. Switch. Well, we have the PS2 hooked up now because um, we found... They probably have it in the store. Yeah. We, well, I found the, the old uh, PS2 dance pad, speaking of what we were talking about. Oh, last week. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have DDR on the PS2 and Guitar okay. Hero on the PS2. We have, Step, we have Step Mania on my computer so I can play Pump gotcha. It Up. Hazel gotcha. prefers Pump It Up. But since the PS2 is hooked up, Katamari is a great game to introduce a kid into the PlayStation. It's a super great game. <laughs> yeah, because you get them used to the controllers and everything else like that, but it's not so frustrating that like, yeah. I may, yeah. I may have to, I may have to look around. That's some <laughs> shit. That's some shit. You're going to spend way too much money getting a copy of Katamari. I can tell you God right now. Damn. Yeah. I know. Or, or like get to do man. And Oh, I got to find all my PS2 game. God damn it. <laughs> God damn it. God damn it. Yeah. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> so yeah, so I, fun. <laughs> I, I, I promise you guys on the other end of that rant was going to be something fun. I appreciate you sticking it out. Um, but yeah, yeah. Hell so yeah. Katamari still holds up and it rules and it's on the Switch and you should go. No, 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 no. We should I know our project is uh songs by female artists and stuff, but we yeah. should sneak yeah, yeah. that in. Like that should be sneak our that, in there. that should be our sound test. Like if we do live shows, that should be like our, our sound test, like our the, sound the test. The problem is it, it's gonna end up being like that weird <laughs> sort of Russian uh, a guy, the the la 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 singer. Yeah. Well, like, because <laughs> that's how I'm gonna end up operating. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it'll just be. It'll genuinely just be how I end up warming up. That's that's all. Wait, how's how's your hand? Speaking of music, how's your hand doing? By the way. Uh, hands are okay. They're, yeah. they're healing up. So we're, we're getting there. Um, a little, little, uh, tense, but we're a okay. I've been, uh, slowly eyeballing when, when all this is over and we're on the other side of this and I have disposable income again, I've been eyeing Orangewood guitars. So we'll yeah. see what I end yeah. up actually picking up, but I want to play a few comparable ones to yeah. see where I'm at. Um, and I've been heading down a rabbit hole of, of YouTube reviews and stuff like that. And boy, howdy kids don't go looking at a guitar online. That's like, I don't know, three, $400. And then fuck that. Fuck Sweetwater. <laughs> fuck Sweetwater. <laughs> fuck, like I understand I'm, we're trying to get sponsors here. Fuck Sweetwater. <laughs> Overpriced fucking crutch field. Like fuck that. No, 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 no. Anyway. 
<laughs> don't go looking at reviews because you're going to end up finding a bunch of people. There's a guy I really like. I can't remember his name. He's out of Finland. He's very mm. good. Mm-hmm. And he does a review and then he ends up doing another review and he's like, so I reviewed a Martin and I'm like, okay, cool, fine. And then I reviewed a Martin from 1942. Yeah. Yeah. One of them is, I think, equivalent six thousand U.S. Uh-huh. The other one's like sixty five thousand. Oh, uh-huh. and <laughs> just, just, I just can't get that noise out of my head. No, just, just pay attention to Mary Spender. Go to her channel. She does a nice review of an orange wood guitar, and that's all you need. Don't go deeper, because if you go deeper, I, I you're going to want that Martin. You're going to want that I, Martin. No, believe me, I want that Martin. Don't get me wrong, but also the idea of spending that kind of money on a guitar is like, see, I, I don't, I don't know, like, because I'd be afraid I'm beating up on something like that. I know it's what it's designed for. It's, it's what it's a tool. It's what it's designed for. You need to play right. it, otherwise, it's just gonna hang in your office, and you're not a dentist. So fucking play right. it. Like if you get it, right. you play it. Like you have to beat on it, right? You, ha- yeah, you have. Yeah, like to it's, play it's it. why I. It's why I could never collect like vintage Ferraris or something like that. I have gotta to use beat it. on them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like I just I, I can't. Brandon, yeah. Martin, yeah. Martin came up with a new shape this past uh, uh, Nam show, which is which is 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 made for like acoustic and electric, and it's like it's yeah. a, they have a new neck shape, yeah. and it's rolled no. a certain way, no. and all this other bullshit. No. It looks really no. good. <laughs> no, 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 I, no, no, no. If, no if what, I what had... I've learned <laughs> is the old ways are better. Like when it comes to acoustics, <laughs> the old ways are better. I don't know, man. Taylor, Taylor's coming out with a lot of new guitars. They've re-engineered the way they do their necks. They've re-engineered, they do their bracing. They sound fucking phenomenal. When the next time you go into a guitar center and you pick up a Taylor, it just, it plays right, dude. It just, the, the neck is nice I, and thin and just. I, I get it. Mm. I, I get it. I totally get it. Just, uh, yeah. Anyway, um, makes, Jamie, makes what have you been geeking out about? Hold, hold <laughs> on. Just, Before we leave this, yeah. the other oh, goal God. is. The other goal is to to get enough of a following to get a, a, a instrument sponsorship from somebody, and then you get a free, you get. I mean, get honestly, gear. we can do just like <laughs> at home orange wood, like orange wood at home, and just I'll do like daily videos of just yeah. trying to learn. Like I'll buckle yeah. down, yeah, just for free guitars. Yeah, I li- like that's that's legit. The other thing, like I yeah, because like the plus side is you. <laughs> Orangewood, you can pay me because I'm not actually collecting unemployment at the moment. So yeah. it's not going to fuck anything <laughs> up, like genuinely. Yeah. But I, I always wanted to, I always wanted to be a PRS artist. <laughs> I, I, I bet you did. I've always I wanted to be did. a PRS artist. I bet you did. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want one, I, knowing me, I wouldn't want one of the expensive ones. I would want like one of the dirt shit cheap models and i'd be like this needs to be affordable for like random person on the street so i want the like the bullshit scrap thing that you carry out back that you don't use for anything like you see that fence (laughs) make me a prs out of that fence (laughs) (laughs) and if you can't do it why am i your artist fuck you (laughs) (laughs) jamie just designs a fence post with some nails in it yeah, but it's got the dragon pickup, so blah, 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 blah. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> it's got the roasted maple neck, and it's really stuff, and it has so much stuff. Yeah, it's, it's, it's you mind. hot gluing PRS pickups to a signpost. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. I love it. Love it. Yeah, love I can, it. I I can love... totally see that now. Real, realistically, yeah. which, okay, so here's an idea, right? <laughs> they're not going to know, because they're, they're all on the eastern shore of Maryland, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so here's my suggestion, right? Shoot them a message and shoot them an email the band The Who. <laughs> you know, the, like the Mongolian metal guys? Yeah. And just tell them that you <laughs> actually grew up in Maryland. <laughs> right. Just tell them that you're, you're a member of that and you're looking to try out some new instruments and you'd like to have them send you a PRS that you could take on tour when this is over yeah. so that you can take PRS guitars around the world. Before they <laughs> figure it out, they're going to be really embarrassed because nobody's going to be like, 
well, we got to get that guitar back. I mean, God, <laughs> we couldn't recognize which Asian guy was which Asian guy. Just, yeah. I need, I need my beard out. I need to pull grow, grow my beard out a little bit more, but yeah, that'd be fucking amazing. Just pull the bait and just pull the bait and switch on them. Just shoot them the music video. Just tell them like, yeah, you can see me. Like I'm, I'm one of the guys in the back. Like just find the one who plays guitar and just tell you know, I'm one of the guys in the back. You can see me at like the minute 45 second marker in this video or whatever yeah. it is. Just yeah. Have them squint and go, <laughs> no, <laughs> they're, I don't, I don't know if you remember this, but there were, uh, we played a show with P Lander. They brought yes. two, they brought two bands from Japan. Um, yes. <clears throat> uh, Sushi Mamire and the Quaff. Okay. The Quaff was like a eighties. They, they all had like eighties, like poofy hair. Nice. And the one guy, the, the one guy with a half mask and they did an amazing cover of beat it before we saw the documentary, but they did an amazing right. cover of beat it. Right. Well, yeah, trust me, Jamie, please understand. And I know if, if Chris Scott is listening to this, I know he's going to be mad at me about it. Cause I saw him ranting about it online, but if alien ant farm has taught us anything <laughs> covering a kid touching baby dangler <laughs> is still okay. Being <laughs> a kid touching baby dangler, not okay. Yeah, they did an amazing version of that song. And uh, I noticed their guitarists both played PRS. And so on a whim, I checked out their website and they're endorsed by PRS. They're PRS artists. Ah. So I was like, I could be like, I'm from the Quaff. I'm that guy with the big hair. It's not so big no more. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, like I'm genuinely, like, like I, wouldn't, I wouldn't pick an artist that they already have. I would pick someone like that's why I'm suggesting that that group because there's so many members in that group. Oh yeah. I don't think they've got the nerve to call you on it. <laughs> I genuinely don't. Uh, yeah, here's 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 proof. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Man, man, I could we could I could spend hours just talking about guitars. Like, <laughs> we could start a whole new podcast where it's just we go through the Sweetwater catalog and we talk shit about guitars that we'll never be able to really afford to play. Can't? We, we really can't because I don't <laughs> want to acknowledge the Sweetwater catalog's existence because <laughs> there's a thing called the internet and I, I don't want to live by the idea of flipping through the old catalog. <laughs> well, then we can go like, on the website and we could go to all these companies. Like we could talk about yeah. how Gibson hasn't really made a good Les Paul in so many years because, oh my God. And they're so Nonsense. expensive. Mm. They, well, yeah, but in all fairness, they did like the 59 reissues where they just basically remade the same old guitar. Yeah, that yeah, kind of yeah. counts, right? That, okay. But they also did the robot tuners. <laughs> And they also did the, the Firebird X. Do you remember the Firebird X? Do you remember that I sent you a link to the Firebird X and you were like, get this shit off of my computer? You probably I don't I mean, remember. that doesn't surprise me. Because it traumatized you and you probably don't well, remember. Yeah. Well, because I have a soft spot in my heart for the Firebird. Like, there's a reason for this. They, they ruined your Firebird for like a good no, three no, years. No, they, they didn't. Because, see... I don't have to acknowledge, like Metallica, <laughs> I don't have to acknowledge their bad stuff. Like, I can just be like, yeah. Like, I, over a long enough timeline, everyone will disappoint you, Jamie. Know this. <laughs> know this. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, 11 years, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Anyway. <laughs> Any um, hoozle. But um, yeah. Yeah, uh, I'm, uh, yeah, it took Gibson a little longer than 11 years, but yeah, you know, like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I just, the, when I look at all of the Gibson instruments, and it's mostly Les Paul, like anytime the new catalog comes out, there's like 10 different versions of the Les Paul. I don't know the difference between them all. Like there's a junior, there's a standard, there there's a studio, a, there's, there's like a there empty a squad. And the price points are always insane to me. Like, I don't understand how a, how a touring musician, if they're looking for, if, if they really, really desire to play a Les Paul, like if that is their machine, if that is the machine they want to use, why would you buy new? Because like the new prices are, are fucking gross. You like the, 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 low, the, the cheapest Les Paul you can get is something ridiculous, like 1200 bucks. 
I'm going to Atomic well, and yeah. I'm getting a beater off the wall and I'm, you know, I'm going to run well, with let's, that. Let's be clear here. You're, you're a touring musician. This is your job. You have spent that much on computer parts or Cintiqs or whatever it is. So sure, spending sure. 1200 or 2000 or 2400 bucks on a guitar because, you know, that's, that's your job, that's your profession, that makes sense. That's an investment in yourself. But the reality is, is that the majority of them are either buying used yeah. or not buying them at all and having them handed to them by either the manufacturer's some sort of promotional tool or by the manufacturer of the guitar strings who also has a partnership with the Ooh, thing. So I didn't even think about string endorsements. Right, because you're thinking string endorsement, gig bags, touring things, um, hydration, alcohol companies, whatever it is. Like, so you got to figure, you got to try and work that any way you can. God. God, right. that sounds awesome. <laughs> right. I mean, well, I mean, that's, that's how I assume that a lot of blues musicians or jazz musicians who don't make the same bank yeah. that some of the more mainstream mm -hmm. artists make are able to really afford these things. Now, the other thought is, is they're just better to their equipment because they just are nicer to their stuff and the stuff just lasts longer or it ends yeah. up just developing character and they've got the same one for who the hell knows how long. Yeah. And just that's how it is. But yeah, like I'm convinced that it's those, those $1,200, $2,000 guitars that are hanging in guitar center. Those are exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. It's for dentists. Yeah. Who, you know, it, it's for dentists who make a fair bit of cash and have disposable income and aren't into motorcycles. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, you know, like I like to fiddle <laughs> around and, you know, on occasion I've been known, I've been known, <laughs> I've been hang known, on, I've, I've been, been known, I've been known <laughs> to head down. Now there's a tour, right? Now, there's a cruise <laughs> for the remaining members of 38 special and the keyboard player who toured with Skinnerd back in 76, they got together and they do a lot of tribute shows. Now I bring my axe with me. Now <laughs> I'm not saying it's going to happen, but at some point along the way, they're going to be like, Hey man, heard you practicing in your stateroom. You should come hang out with us on stage. And I have been ready to go. Like, believe me, I, got, <laughs> I have been able to do the solo from So Caught Up In You for like the last 12 years. Nice. Like, I get up every Sunday, got principles, go downstairs to my own personal studio. You know, like to get my own little man cave, but you know, it's got some sound deadening around it. It's pretty nice. It's not amazing, but it's pretty nice. And I like to fire up, you know, one of my favorite 38 special songs, you know, shout out to Dave from 38. Anyway, so hop Dave, on the forums, Dave. make sure, you're right, yeah, make sure to check it out. So, you know, I, my, my username, by the way, Russ469, am I right? Come on. Anyway, yeah. so I just jam it out. You know what I mean? Like got my headphones on, got the studio things going on. And when the wife steps out, you know, she does her Sunday shopping out of the market and whatever it is. I crank those babies up, get those two bamps up to four. That's right. Oh, God. Open it up and yeah. just let the sound bask its way over the Chesapeake. I know my neighbors probably don't like me, but what do I care? <laughs> rich god damn it I, yeah ugh, <laughs> fuck <laughs> fuck god man son of a bitch uh, yeah i don't know like the the idea of having these things i get like i i get the desire of it but i guitars the one thing i've really been learning that is unless you are the edge or steve Vai or whatever it is and you are really digging into the pedals and what have you the only reason to buy a brand new guitar <clears throat> well there there are three reasons to buy a brand new guitar you're buying an acoustic because you don't want to spend the money on something ridiculous you're a weekend fun player like myself and you want something that just kind of sounds nice and most likely the top of the range is probably 800 bucks. Like that's a, yeah, yeah, that's, that's a reasonable, excessive, that's, that's but a not reasonable un, price. right. But not unreasonable. Yeah. Right. So like, okay, cool. So that, that makes sense. We're talking like half the price of a, of a, of a beat up Honda civic is yeah. really where, where we're at now. Yeah. Once we start to get into reproduction models, that's where we get into Honda, like used 98 Honda civic money. We're on 1600, give or take 12, to 1600. Yeah. Right. 
But the reality is, is the only reason you're spending that money is because they're reproductions of the old guitars that you won't actually spend the real money on because you have financial limitations. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, that's true. You want that old 58. You don't have the money. You ain't got 58 money, but you got 58 reproduction money. And you want to hear what it sounds like. And genuinely, you've never played a 58. All you know is, is it sounds better than what is next to it, which is the brand new one. And mm-hmm. it says that it's a 58 reproduction. Yeah. Until you actually play the two side by side, you genuinely don't know what you're stepping into. Yeah. There, there used to be a Southworth Guitars in Bethesda. And, yeah. And right when I was getting into guitar in high school, that's when it closed. But... The the two times I went in there, they had the vintage shit. They had the 58s, like the 57 Strat or whatever, you know. Yeah, like yeah. They had the original shit. Right. And I didn't yeah. know enough to like go and just grab a hold and play Stairway because right. I was still I was still learning. Like that's that's yeah. learning how to play shit. But like you're you're right. Like they you you can't justify thirty thousand dollars on a guitar. Like no. Unless you are incredibly wealthy and that is your side project. Yeah, like this, for sure. this is the thing is if, if cars aren't your thing and guitars are your thing and you do well for yourself and you make a couple hundred K a year, you can probably afford to scratch your way a little bit or skip a vacation or what have you. You can be like, you know what? Fuck it. When am I going to have another opportunity to pick this thing up? It's a one of a yeah. kind. It's just going to go up in value anyway. I may yeah. as well just pull the trigger on it now. You're probably not wrong. Do you need it? No, of course not. Nobody really needs it. Mm. But if you if you're one of those people who have it, it's probably your pride and joy, and you yeah. probably keep it just as nice as any sort of you know really nice classic car, and you probably get just as much or more enjoyment out of it than a lot of the classic car guys do because at least you get to play yours they don't even get to take theirs out of the garage yeah what i really need to do is learn how to solder i have a soldering iron i have flux i just need to learn how to i need to sit down and learn how to wire shit up so i can build the strat that i fucking want i have a strat in my head that i have always wanted it's got (laughs) it's got fluence pickups fishman fluence pickups because there's no hum and they have different voicings built in. And I had the okay. idea and, and then like, uh, uh, like locking heads and a floating, br- like it's simple, but I okay. want it. And I feel like if I learn how to solder, I could do it. And there's enough part casters out there. There's enough places to get, like, I know where to source the neck. I know where to source the body. I would paint the body myself and get it all dolled up. I might install LEDs cause I'm an extra piece of shit. We fuck face <laughs> and like, do it put in the fluence pickups and just, I don't know, maybe, maybe that's what I should do in addition to everything else is learn how to fucking solder and like make circuits and stuff. Because I think it would be fun to make instruments for people. (laughs) I I think that'd be rad genuinely as a better resource and be able to actually get it done. I would say get the body, get the neck, go and customize the body and neck and everything else like that. And then find a dude who has the ability to do all the wiring. Yeah. Because you may end up developing a relationship with them and having their intricate knowledge is probably a really great resource. You can learn to solder at any point along the way, but if you've got a guitar tech who really knows what they're doing, you can probably install the rest, the the neck and the headstock and yada. Like you can probably do all that. But as far as like wiring it up and getting, you know, the pickups ready to rock and roll and getting everything prepped that way, that's probably not a terribly difficult thing to do, but having someone who really knows what they're doing would be a really nice resource. The, uh, the repair shop at Chuck Levin's is very good. They, there you go. they know their shit. Also, um, the uh, Shauna from War on Women and her husband, Brooks, Hell yeah. they, they, yeah. Have a, they have an amp shop. So they do amp. Nice. Well, they do amp repairs and stuff. I'm sure they know how to wire shit. Maybe I, I should bet just they know how to wire to shit. Them yeah, you when probably this is over should. And, like dude. go and visit and stuff because I need them to work on my amp anyway because the reverb doesn't work. But like I should call oh, them. Go. I should call them up when this fucking bullshit is over. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I Plan. I bet <laughs> I bet between the two of them, they can probably uh, handle that. Also, huge shout out to them because they got the chance to play in Florida with one of my favorite bands, Baroness, and that's super rad. So yeah, super fucking jealous. Yeah, <laughs> seeing seeing their name pop up on Baroness's Instagram feed, I was like, 
wait, the fuck? Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, um, so- the fuck are we talking about? Well, so uh, bef- bef- before I got sidetracked on guitar shit, because I guess that's yeah, what yeah. I'm geeking on. That's not exactly what I'm geeking on. Um, well, it is now. <laughs> it is now. Uh, so um, there was a report that came out either yesterday or today about the um, Trolls 2, the Trolls 2 sequel, making like $100 million in its first three weeks. And people saying like, this means that, you know, m- rental movies at home is a thing and this could be a thing. And, and I want everyone to slow down just a little bit because, uh, Brandon, did you rent Trolls 2? No. Exactly. Trolls 2 was rented because parents are trying to figure out what the fuck to do with their kid at home well, because well, we are not well, equipped well, well, as teachers and stuff. So out a second. I think it's... No, that- <laughs> Like this movie, this movie is meant for this time. But the question is, like, do you think, do you think that this is going to be the shape of movies to come? Do you think more major releases are going to go direct to rental even after this? Or do you think movies are going to have to figure out a way to get people back into the theaters? It's, it's a two part uh, question. Do you think, do you think this is the shape of movies to come? And what can movie theaters do to get your ass back into theaters once this is over? Do I hope that this is the shape of movies to come? Yes, because frankly, I think movies are way too fucking expensive and the idea of paying more for a ticket to see it once than I would for the digital or DV or like Blu-ray version of it in my home is Mm -hmm. fucking ridiculous. And that doesn't mean a free pass to fucking charge more for digital copies or Blu-rays, you fucks. Yeah, well, here's, here's a bonus. It was 20 bucks, which sounds like a lot. But if you think about like, the the ticket Wait, to price de- to to rent it to rent yeah it was twenty bucks yeah, to rent but but you but you got to watch it for forty eight hours so we saw Trolls two three times <laughs> over the past week how many people saw Trolls two it was me Audrey and Hazel that's at least okay that's sixty dollars in the theater thank Cause like, you because it because it's the ticket right. prices and all that kind of stuff and right so let's assume Sunday matinee price right. Right. So let's assume that let's let's say you get lucky and you manage to do it for ten dollars a seat because yeah. it's Sunday matinee. You get up early, you go to see the movie at ten thirty in the morning on a Sunday. Yeah. Right. You have to take Hazel there. Yeah. You have to spend money on concessions and everything else like that, which is where movie theaters really do make a lot of their money. Yeah. Because. I imagine like it, it, you, you got a 50, 50 shot with Hazel as far as I can tell <laughs> on whether or not she'd be cool with just going to see the movie or she'd be like snacks. And like, <laughs> I would totally understand it would go either way, depending on how she's feeling. Yeah. 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 Popcorn is always a good. <laughs> what, this is the thing I've seen a movie with you and I, I always picture her as a, a, a mini <laughs> you. So it, it like, there's a real Mason Dixon line on what she's had beforehand. <laughs> Food. So, <laughs> right. So You'd spend thirty dollars minimum going oh, yeah. to see that in the theater anyway. So twenty dollars yeah. for a forty-eight hour hour rental makes total sense. I I agree. I'm I'm a hundred percent because like we saw that way more than we would have seen it in the theater. Like we might have right. seen it twice in the theater, but we saw it three fucking times in the same week. Right now, here's the question: <gasps> reasonably, when it comes out as a permanent digital download. Will you buy it? Probably. If it's not available on any of the streaming services, we'll probably get it. Right. Because you saw it a bunch of times over 48 hours and Hazel really enjoyed it. Yeah. So okay. even, even then, that's maybe 50 bucks. Now, right. So there, well, no, uh, the a new copy, digital copies are about $20. So let's assume oh, so on, the, on the low side, let's say you're, they're getting $40 out of you. Now, yeah. they're getting a guarantee that they're getting $40 out of you. I think that's not a bad call because I don't know. Do you own the first Trolls movie on digital download? No, because uh, I think it's on Netflix. But if it ever went off of Netflix, damn sure we would buy it. 
Okay, so that answers the question, though, is that's a built-in audience, but the, the way I'm looking at it is your daughter had a chance to see it a bunch, fall in love with it, and create some sort of attachment to it that would then force your buying power to then go purchase it more. Yeah. That's a net win. Yeah. I think there are franchises, Marvel movies, mm-hmm. um, like genuinely, if I didn't have to wait, if I could sit down in my living room Pop some popcorn, order some pizza, whatever it is, turn the lights down, turn the sound bar up, and be able to watch the new Avengers movie without having to go out and cram next to everybody for the first 48 hours. How for 24 hours at $20? I'd have done it. Yeah, for sure. I'd have 100% done it. For sure, yeah. I, so the Star Wars movie, Star Wars movies would have been instant. Purchase. Right. Like, right. So like, I think reasonably, I think the real question is, do children's movies, which we know have a built in audience and desire to go to the theater and go see new movies and media appropriate juggernauts that are basically like Disney, DC, what have you, recognized properties. Should those be 20 bucks? Should indie movies all be a $20 rental? Should those be discounted? I, I don't know. I, I, like, I like the price point at 20 because um, for us, it's, it's three tickets. Right. So 20, 20 is a bargain. If you're okay. single, I'm not, I, I don't know. I don't know what the calculation is for someone who's single. Which do you, I, I, going to see a movie is what, sixteen fifty plus finance charges and everything else like that. Yeah. Genuinely, I would pay $20 to not have to fucking go to the theater. <laughs> I would. Yeah. I, I hate going to the theater. Oh it's man. It's a terrible fucking experience. Oh man. I love going to the theater. That's my thing. Like, I, I love going to the movie. No interest anymore because oh, it's it's lost its it it's lost its love for me. Mm. Because there's nothing fancy to me about sitting next to somebody who I don't care for or having to fight to try and reserve the right seat yeah. or dealing with other people's cell phones or whatever it is, and then the times and then make sure you get there early and then just like. I'm cool with the idea. If that still needs to be a thing for people, cool. <laughs> I get it. I'm sure there are a bazillion people who still want to go out to the movies and go have that social aspect. Awesome. Yeah. For me, mm-hmm. I would see more new movies by just renting them than I would going to the theater. Yeah. Because please I, understand, I, I've been to the theater in the past couple of years. I've been to the theater for Avengers and Star Wars. That's it. Yeah. And Fast uh, uh, Hobbs and Shaw. Wait, were you there for Hobbs and Shaw? Shaw? Which, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Which I forgot about because I was so fucking disappointed about I didn't go and buy it. (laughs) I don't own Hobbs and Shaw. Yeah, yeah. The the five panning shots, the five drone shots in a row kind of... How... (laughs) <laughs> but how much more fun would that movie have been if we could have all hung out, rented it, and watched it? Because then we yeah. could have been obnoxious jackasses and during the whole thing and we loved it. Long- yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. We could have recreated the, the Pacific Rim experience in your house. <laughs> we could have done that. Like, that's the other thing, too, is a lot of people like to talk during movies. Yeah. They, they can't help it. Yeah. I'd love to take that question mark out of it. I'd love for people who don't have the income to be able to take a whole family of people to the movies to be able to go and rent a movie and sit in their living room in front of their 42 inch TV and watch it as a family. Yeah. Cause imagine if you're on a much tighter budget than you are yeah. and you've got a family of, let's say you've got three kids and two parents. Oh yeah. Then rental makes a lot of sense. A lot of sense. Cause you could pause it if they need to take a shit. If they like freak out, they're not disturbing anyone else. I, you know. and, and here's the reality. Would those parents end up buying Trolls 2 when it ended up going on Blu-ray or, sure. or whatever it is? Sure. Or sure. But would they spend money on it twice, once to see if it was worth it? Yeah. Or just to have a nice treat for the kids? Yeah. I don't think you're actually 
taking away any money from anyone in that scenario. Yeah. You're I, not, I'm not, I'm not, you know, having me be able to watch a movie at home isn't taking money away from a box office. No, it's not. The, the I'm only, not going anyway. Yeah. The only places you're hurting are the theaters, but AMC is shutting down anyway. So it's like, who's going to be left when they're, Oh, are they really? Yeah. They, they like soon after this happened, they were like, we out. They, they shut down a whole bunch of their fancy theaters. The Uptown in DC, that was an AMC. The Uptown in DC that has been a staple in that neighborhood yeah. is no longer. Yeah, and I'm sure some other movie theater place will <clears throat> pop in or whatever it is. But genuinely also, those mega theaters, there are so many of them and it is such a huge difference in between which one is great and which one's shit. A movie theater was the reason that my, my watching of Star Wars I didn't really enjoy as much. Mm. Like I, and you know what? Genuinely, I didn't buy it on digital. I'm waiting until May the 4th when it shows up on Disney plus. Yeah. Star Wars isn't getting their money out of me right now because I had such a bad experience at the movies. Damn. So let a bad movie experience taint my opinion about things. Shit. That sucks. Well, fuck that. No, like, I, I'm paying sixteen fifty or whatever it was to go see it opening night. I had to hunt around for tickets. I find tickets. I buy them months in advance. I'm prepped for it. I'm excited about it. Yeah. I go to a Regal cinema, a high-end cinema. I have reserved seating that looks like there's less seats. What I end up sitting in is tantamount to a bolt upright, narrow as shit seat that feels like I'm sitting at Oriole Park at Camden Yards only I'm sitting next to six jackasses and some dude in the middle of winter who's decided that he's wearing goddamn boat shoes and shorts <laughs> for the parka. He's walking by because for some reason he has to just pee every four minutes. Yeah. And he keeps knocking into my knee to the point where I'm in the middle of dealing with thinking Chewbacca's dead and I'm literally <laughs> looking at a girl and go, sit the fuck down. Sit yeah. down. I, sit down now. I, I wish we had figured it out earlier because I think I think you would have had a good experience if you saw it with us in the in I, that other theater. I think if if I if I would have spent the money earlier and I would have went to a big theater and I would have went with everyone, everything else. But like I had to work. Yeah. I couldn't yeah. just cut out of work early and go <clears throat> down and drive down to meet every like that wasn't an option. Yeah. And we ended so, up not doing that anyway. We ended up going to like the what are, there's like the the not the strand. I don't know. Whatever theater it was. It was in Baltimore, but yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. But like, <clears throat> but like that's the thing is So the theater experience is not appealing to you. <laughs> the theater experience is not appealing to me. And I understand that I I am to the best of my understanding, I am of a minority, but genuinely I think that if you present people with the ability to actually get into movies and you release them on digital, and the idea is not a social distancing sort of thing, but Get your friends together, crack yeah. a few beers, Beauty hang party. out at your house and watch a new movie. Hell cool. yeah. Hell yeah. I would be totally down for that. Especially like if, if my income situation was much better, I'd be willing to throw 40 bucks a month at that. That's two movies. I'd be willing to throw $40 a month at that to have a few people over or have my girlfriend and I sit down and just be like, yeah, you know what? This looks like a lot of fun. We should totally watch this. Yeah. I. Yeah, I, I kind of think, I kind of th wish that Disney would have just left the slate as is and released them on rental. Like, we would have watched Mulan rental. We would have watched Black Widow on a rental. We would have watched it a whole bunch right, of cause, times. Because we don't, right, because we don't know <clears throat> what's going to happen after this fact. Yeah. Like, what happens if social distancing <laughs> is still in effect and we're months down the road and movie theaters still aren't a logical thing? Yeah. Yeah, and and Disney's leaving money on the table. Like I'm sure people would be renting this shit out of the Mulan movie right now. I I'm sure yeah. people would be renting this shit out of the Black Widow movie right now. Like, yeah, I, 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 I yeah. I, um, imagine a new Marvel movie right now. Fuck, everybody went bug nutty over Tiger King. You trying to tell me that fucking 
Like, and I, and I can totally understand the, the anti-argument of this about like, what about the global market and what about this and what about that? And what, I, I don't know what, I don't what know. releases <laughs> are like in China or what have you and yada, yada. Yeah. Like, yeah. I understand there, there is a huge restriction, but for me personally, I think that if a movie theater needs to go out of business, fine. I would love to frankly move to a smaller, more niche movie theater experience where there is a place that has six screenings and it's a more traditional style movie thing and you pay you pay the same amount you're paying now and they get big run movies and i'm good with that and if a new star wars comes out there are five screenings of star wars for the first two days and we go back to where we were and it's two main screenings of star wars in alternating timelines and everything else like that but like i don't need 3d yeah fuck 3d I don't care about it. I don't need it. I'm not watching it at home. I'm not breaking out the glasses. The 3D stuff ain't happening for, for home use. It didn't catch on. No. Nope. Failed experiment. Just who right. gives a shit? Like, gives a shit? Stop it. Right. Yeah. yeah I, I, don't, I don't need it. This is not fucking Back to the Future 2. I don't need <laughs> it. I, I don't need it. I don't need hoverboards. And I don't, well, in all fairness, I'd totally take a hoverboard. But hoverboard, yeah. I don't need 3D movies. Turns no. out, I don't need 3D movies. Nobody needs 3D movies. Like I'm good with this. I, I can't yeah. I can't get into it. I'm I won't spend the money on it. And frankly, like I treat it like electric cars until 3D movies are able to either work without any sort of glasses or be so reasonably priced that it doesn't become a serious financial hindrance to me to have a 3D TV and all the other stuff. It ain't gonna happen for me. Yeah. Like it, I'm priced out of the market right now and I don't care to be priced into the market. <laughs> no desire. I, I'm not spending exorbitant guitar money, go get in a 3D TV yeah. so that I can go watch Sharknado in 3D. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I like it personally. I was thinking about um, people were, people were complaining about digital comics and then finally the industry gave up and said, fine, fuck it we're embracing digital comics. So Comixology has releases Marvel and DC comics. I think there's a month in between the release schedules. Like they, they do a sure. delay schedule, but sure. I don't give a shit. More people are reading comics digitally than paper anyway. And I feel like the American movie market has declined so re- so much recently anyway, that you might as well try something new because it's not working. People don't go to the movies. Okay. How about, how about that? We, we've all agreed tentatively that there's a two week spoiler time period, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. New movies are released on that Thursday. Two weeks after that, the digital download is available. That, that sounds great to me. That sounds, like, that sounds great it, it, to me. And it's a movie rental and it's available for rental for the next two or three months. Then there's a stop gap. It comes down from rental and then it goes to being part of a regular movie release where you go and buy it. We give yeah. people time to go to the theater and enjoy the theater experience. And if you want to spend the money to go to the theater, you're going to be first in line. Cool. You're going to go do the thing. If you, God, people who have young kids who want to go see new movies and don't want to have to pay for the fucking babysitters and everything else like that and just decide, fuck it. We'll just wait for it to come out and we'll just buy it outright. Yeah. Imagine if they could put their kid to bed and then go rent the movie and yeah. watch it. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a good point because like every time we go, like going to a movie is a big production. Like we have to make sure uh, one of our parents is ready to babysit and can come over and do right. all that kind of bullshit and yeah, stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. We have to schedule all that. There. If we could put Hazel to sleep and rent it right away, we would be watching so many more movies, so many more right. movies. <laughs> right. Like just as an option and you just, you create the incentive. If you want to go and go see the movie, cool. For the first two weeks, it's in theaters. Yeah. Two weeks after that, that following Thursday, 1201, it becomes a <laughs> digital download for rental. Right. Yeah. Same price, $20. And if the buzz is good, you're going to get more flies that way because- Right. Right. Because people will go to the theater and then we'll go and rent it as well. Yeah. They go, holy shit, did you see this? No, nope. I didn't see come, that. I didn't come over, come over and well, we're going to we'll have a that's party. That's the other thing too. Like what happens? You go to hang out with your friends who have kids- they put the kids to bed and you're like, oh man, I got a chance to totally see this. This was really great. Oh, really? 
yeah, we, we didn't really? get a chance to see it because so-and-so, fuck it, here. And they yeah. throw, you throw your credit card at your friend's account and go, fuck it, movie's on me. Let's sit down, let's watch a movie. Yeah. We'll order pizza. Let's get the pizza, yeah. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> oh, like, and the food is better at home. The food is better at home. Thank <laughs> you. God damn it. Like, oh, shit. Oh, movie and dumplings. You can't get dumplings in the theater. You can get dumplings at home. <laughs> I like genuinely Star Wars and Dan Dan noodles. That's all I'm saying. Like I just, yeah. <laughs> Mandalor Mandalorian and Dan Dan noodles. Uh, Mandalorian yeah. and Dan Dan noodles. <laughs> yeah, Mandalorian and Dan Dan noodles. Right, like that's. I, Dan, 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 like Dan, that's Dan, the thing Dan, is, Dan, Dan, noodles, 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 noodles. Because all you're really doing is pissing off people. Like by not having this option, I feel like all you're doing is basically forcing people to avoid the internet on whatever the topic is so that it comes out or having it spoiled and then go and decide whether or not you want to buy it anyway. Yeah. Based on whatever the hype happened and everything else like that. And the hype machine dies eventually and people start to get jaded about it. Yeah. Yeah. So like, let the first two weeks happen where everyone who's like, fuck, I need to see it. And then let people who can't necessarily get to a theater for whatever reason decide that, fuck, I'm renting this. This is going to be really good. <laughs> I'm getting home from work. I, yeah. can't, I can't make it to a theater in time until yeah. there's a late showing. And I don't want to have to leave a theater at 1.30 in the morning to then drive half an hour home to then like just fucking let people be able to get home at nine o'clock pick up food on the way home and just be able to just sit down at their, on their couch at nine twenty six yeah. and hit play and start the movie. You'll get your $20. I also think, I, I also think people would go out and rent movies that they wouldn't necessarily want to watch. Yeah, but I do too. Cause like I definitely, the price point's lower. The, the price point is lower. Um, the, the barrier to entry is, is a lot, there's, Middle. there's less friction because yeah. you, don't, you don't want to schedule anything. It's right there on your fucking machine. It's, it's there. Right. Yeah. I, yeah. You end up reading a review and you're like, fuck, I don't, I don't know if I wanted to see this before, but this, this kind of sounds kind of cool. Yeah. Hey on, do you want to watch this? <laughs> yeah, sure. All right, cool. I tell you what, if cats was on digital, I would have rented that shit. No, you wouldn't have. I would have rented that shit because Why? it sounded like a fucking mess and I would have invited you over <laughs> and we would have gotten okay. a whole bunch of food and gotcha. I would have supplied you with a lot of alcohol and we would have done a podcast right there. Because you up. wanted to see me get drunk watching yeah. Luther yeah. just yeah. be a cat. Yeah, and we would have put that up as one of our special episodes on Podbean that I'm, you can buy, a, buy for like a dollar. <laughs> It would have been amazing. It would have been amazing, Brandon. The, the cats watch along. Spoiler alert. Yeah. You don't actually have to watch cats. I'll describe <laughs> all of it. Yeah. And, and that, that would have been extra content. So we would have made, yeah. we would have made like a cent on it. I, but yeah. I would have rented that. Yeah. You know what? Fuck it. Yeah. Do you hear that? Cats creators. <laughs> we would have given you $20. Now, not going to happen. You ain't getting a shit. You ain't, you ain't getting, getting, shit. Shit. You ain't getting shit. You ain't getting shit. No. So like, yeah, I, cool. I, I'm good. I like if the sacrifice has to be that megaplexes start to go out of business or start to have to change their, their business model. I'm genuinely okay with that. And I hate to say it this way. I don't feel bad about that. Mm. I think megaplexes are like shopping malls and they're, they have a life cycle and I'm genuinely surprised they're still around. Yeah. And if it means that they have to kind of go the way of the dodo or become more of a specialty kind of treat, okay. I mean, I'm good I, with that. I do like watching anime on the big screen. Like um, Fathom Events does like one or two night events where they show like yeah. an anime thing. Like me and Alex went to see the One Piece movie. Uh, we, me and Alex went to see like Char's Counterattack, which is the terrible Gundam movie, but it was on the big th big screen. So like, cool. I, I like the theater for those type of experiences because there's no way you could see right. these things on the big but, screen. But, here's, but like for other but, movies, I don't give a shit. But that kind of proves a point that movie theaters are forcing to change the way that they make money because they're not without a wealth of entertainment. Yeah. There's a ton of stuff out. Yeah. They're, like before all this happened, there were a ton of options to go see in the theaters. Yeah. 
And they're still choosing to do these fathom event things where they show concerts or, you know, short run anime things or specialty events or whatever Doctor it is. Who, so, Doctor Who premiered. <laughs> right. Fathom so event. like genuinely maybe movie theaters need to start doing more stuff like that where it becomes a special event gathering sort of thing where you want to see it before other people see it before it comes out. You have to go to the cinema. Yeah. And that's where it is. It's, it's, it's a, you know, it's an event spot as opposed to anything else. Maybe that's the way that you go see live music now. I don't know. Like, I, I think there's a very reasonable thought process there that if you said, hey, so, I don't know what the fuck. Um, <laughs> uh, My Chemical Romance. Yeah. Okay. So, they're playing a bunch of, well, they were playing a bunch of limited <laughs> shows. That sucks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, play, playing a couple limited shows across the country and tickets got sold out like that. And the resale market got ridiculous. Like I think new, like the seats were somewhere like, I think like mid level were something like $135 a seat, which I, I mean, that ain't cheap yeah. for, you know, for, for not being up on anything that ain't cheap. Yeah. Um, I think genuinely if you presented the idea of, hey, so you could see MCR in the theater where you could actually see them play live and it's a live feed in studio quality, surround sound and everything else like that for $20 a seat. I think a lot of nerds, will, you know, a lot of kids would end up going to that. Yeah. I think your more popular concerts, you could totally do that as a supplemental thing. Yeah. Hey guys, we're doing a one night only at, and a couple music venues who have the ability to do this. Your Verizon centers, your Madison square gardens, whatever it is, yeah. you know, your, your top tier places have the ability and have the microphones and have the, the capability to work with some of these things like fathom events and do a broadcast of it. And in the cities where the band isn't playing, you show this or in the city where, Hey, it's completely sold out. You can't see it in the DC area at all, but thanks to fathom events, <laughs> you can. Yeah. And, and that would help on their touring schedule because they have to tour less. They get more money because they get more people into the theater. Cause like and people, people who would get into the theater might not be able to afford the ticket. So they're not buying a ticket anyway. Now they are. Right, they're not. Now that's extra right. income. Right. And they can't see them, the, you know, the, the really small, like the smaller, more intimate shows. They can't see all of them. But we're saying like for one night, you know, on Saturday, June, whatever it is, yeah. My Chemical Romance is playing at so-and-so. You can see them live at the your local theater. Tickets starting at $20, you know, pre-purchase only. Tickets at the door, night of show, thirty dollars. People you raise would the do price. that in a heartbeat, man. Come I think on. people would. Yeah, come on, that'd be great. And, you know, like I, I think movie theaters have the ability to do this, and I think we can have both. And I'm not trying to undercut anybody, but genuinely, genuinely like, I'm not without options anymore. Right. So it ain't like I have to watch crap TV, or I have to like. I'm able to stream almost anything I'd like. TV's so good now too, shit. <laughs> TV is so good and I can binge it and I can watch whatever I want, whenever I want. You have to be smarter about this sort of thing. And this idea of sticking by this antiquated box office number, stop it. Just call it an income. Yeah. Hey, the movie raked in over the first weekend. Cool. All right. Yeah. And then, you know, the first two weeks are box office numbers and afterward they're gross income numbers. And watch those numbers go through the fucking roof by yeah. week three. People, I, people will rent the shit. People will, I think rent, people the will shit. rent the shit. And I think yeah. it's worth it. And I don't think they're cutting off their nose despite their face by having people gather a couple people in a room. I really yeah. don't. Yeah. I think you just need to present opportunity and a lot more people will watch movies when they come out. I genuinely do. Mm -hmm. And I think you only have box office records because you charge more for tickets. That's it. <laughs> yeah. I do. I genuinely do. <laughs> yeah. 
Because I think if you actually looked at actual tickets purchased, yeah, I think other than your your you know your Avengers or your Star Wars, I I, I mean I don't think movie watching is up. I if I had to take a guess, I say it probably peaked in the um, late aughts. Yeah, OE. yeah. the the only The only places the movie industry is is picking up numbers is overseas, and that's not happening now. So. Cool. But, well, whatever. Fine. Then treat other markets differently. Yeah. Domestic sales have been for a long time. So. <laughs> right. So, I mean, you're already, you're already making movies for other markets. Just fucking handle it because Just people are going to pirate it, yeah. your movie anyway. <laughs> yeah, right. Cause like, true. don't give me the pirating argument. People are going to pirate your movie anyway. Fuck off with that. Yeah. 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 But parents aren't going to have time to pirate a movie. They're going to rent the troll movie because it's there. And it's on their gonna, DVD. They just go press the button and most, they go watch the fucking thing. Most people, if you present a reasonable price point to buying the thing or renting the thing, most people don't want to spend the trouble of pirating things. Yeah, it's a pain in the ass. <laughs> it's a pain in the ass. Yeah, so that's that's where my head is. Is do I think it's the future? No, but I think it should be. Yeah. Yeah, And I, I think it would make a much more enjoyable experience and it would turn a casual movie viewer like myself into a much more common movie viewer. Yeah, for sure. And, it, you know, I got to believe I'm not alone. And I think there's enough people like me that if they wanted to, instead of getting, let's say reasonably, I buy the tickets for three movies or let's say four movies or whatever it is. Let's say they're reasonably getting a hundred dollars out of me a year. I think they could easily get $200 out of me a year. Yeah. My, my movie watching has gone down a lot since Hazel's been born and they would definitely be getting a lot more money from me because I would have rented the John Wick bullshit. I would have rented pretty much any action movie that came out because I used right. to go to watch them all the time. So like, yeah, right. Yeah. But instead you lost that ability. Like I, yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I genuinely think much like, you know, industries like pro wrestling, you're just, you're getting in your own way. If you <laughs> get out of your own way, you could genuinely make more money. Yeah. I, I feel that. So yeah. I, you know, what, what do I know? Let us rent the movies. Let us rent the movies. Let us rent the movies. <laughs> let it, yeah, let us rent the movies. Yeah. Like, and also, in all fairness, right now, not the best barometer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, because I, there, I'm not spending money on movies. I'm not. I don't have. I don't want to spend my limited disposable income right now on movies. Yeah, I'm gonna use it on. You know, if I'm going to buy a movie, it's going to be a movie that I that isn't streaming somewhere that I want to rewatch over and over again. It's yeah. going to be on, you know, replayable content like Katamari. It's it's so not going to be on a, Katamari. Oh, but so like, good. that's the whole thing is yeah. Once this is done, let this be a test balloon for what you guys want to do, and see where you're at. Yeah, I think. I think Trolls was a good starter. It's skewed though. I think I think a, they really need to release a, a bigger movie. Like I would not have given a shit about Trolls if it wasn't for Hazel. So I think they need to release like a movie that has a little bit more interest, like more general interest in it. I, I don't. I got to be honest with you. I think you continue to use this as the way to release children's movies. Guarantee that you've got that income. And then start dipping your toes in the water for mm -hmm. more adult content. Mm -hmm. Like let that be the way to do it. Yeah. Because if it works for the kids, then it works for everybody else. Let yeah. this, let it, let it be the inverse of, of the death of beta. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let, yeah. Like, VHS and adult and adult films is what killed beta. <laughs> let this children's the movies opposite, yeah. and downloads be the, the, the death <laughs> of, of the mass release cinema. I love like, it. Yeah. That, that'd be great. Oh man. Yeah. Pixar should just drop uh soul. Was it soul? Is soul the, the next one that they're, that they had? A, I have no idea. Uh, yeah. They should just drop it. Cause I, th I think, I think, I think it's a good market to test. 
parents need something to do with their kids because we are parents not need to something teach. to do with their kids make the price point reasonable like you have i don't think 20 dollars is unreasonable for 48 hours worth of watch yeah and i think you've got a built-in market of people who are looking for some sort of release and i genuinely think it would do just fine yeah i yeah i, I, really I agree do. there yeah i really really do yeah. and if you want to be clever about it you know, you want to get a resurgence or something like that, put the thing on sale rental for 15 one week or something, you know, yeah. you start to dip in sales, make it a sale sort of thing. Yeah. Like yeah. I, I really, I really genuinely think that your kids are captive at home right now. And they don't have a school. They need something to watch. Yeah, for sure. Parents are looking for a break. And if they can find something that is genuinely reasonably priced and good content and is a positive reinforcement for the kids. Cool. Because at a certain point, the kids are going to end up watching what the parents are watching. <laughs> yeah. And that ain't going to be great. No. <laughs> yeah. Hazel at, at, at six is watching Westworld with us. <laughs> like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, whoops. <laughs> Hazel comes to school with a bunch of swords and just like whacks the shit out of her. <laughs> cool. <laughs> No, not cool. That's, that's okay. <laughs> I, I don't want to. I don't want to be on the internet saying that. That's not right. No, but yeah, I. Why not? What What do you like? Might as well why, try. Might as well try. I yeah. At the at the risk of, of quoting the Cheeto King, what do you have to lose? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean by all means, Pixar, Disney, whatever it is, sit on your content. Rest on your laurels. Don't bring any money in. Fuck it. Yeah. Like if you if you guys got the amount of money to sit on it and wait and think that you can fire this hype machine back up and get people excited about these movies, because that's the other thing too. The interest of a movie has a very short half life. Mm, mm -hmm. So once you rung that bell on these movies, you almost have to do something with them. Yeah, like, like the 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 Black Widow is a big example of that because that that was hype, 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 hype. Right. Well, they had to pull the plug on it because yeah. I think they're afraid to release it. Yeah. Now I get the idea of you know someone you know, I, someone I'm sure a lot of people on the internet would be fucking pissed off that the first real like female led Marvel movie being direct to home release would be a fucking thing and would, would piss people off. But at the same time, it's not like Disney or Marvel planned a fucking pandemic yeah. to yeah. undercut this movie. So yeah. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not, what do, you, what do you do? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, right. Like what rock in a hard place reasonably. Do you release it to the captive audience and see whether or not people actually want to watch this thing? Or do you want to wait on it? And gamble to see, because the other thing is, I, like I said before, I don't know what people are going to end up doing once all this is over. I know a lot of people are going to want to end up going out to the movies, but I ask you this question. Let's take that Venn diagram. People who are going to not care about social distancing to the point where they're going to go to the movie theaters and people who want to go see a Black Widow movie. <laughs> how much crossover do you have <laughs> yeah 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 maybe the Black Widow movie isn't the one that we test this on because I think genuinely you may end up be setting yourself up for failure yeah <laughs> that yeah <laughs> I don't know man I, I, like I'm, uh, I'm sorry but I I I don't see the same people who are grandstanding about going back to work and misspelling their signs going to see the first female-led fucking Marvel movie. I well, don't. there's Captain Marvel, and they probably didn't like Captain Sorry. Marvel either. God, yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm completely forgetting about Captain they were, Marvel. They were bitching about years. Captain Marvel too, so... Right. But yeah, like, how many of them are actually going to go see a Black Widow movie? So... Yeah. Fucking and then, just release it. And then the the other problem is not only did they have to stop all the the advertisement, but to ramp it up, that's more money. To ramp it up again to get the same amount of eyes to get the press releases to do the press tour, 
that's a whole nother production. That's like, I know. that's extra money on the top that they might not have. I so know. it's, I know. it's going to get fucked I whenever know. it's released. It's going to get fucked. I don't know. God. I don't know. I, now I feel terribly guilty <clears throat> that I completely forgot about Captain Marvel. So oh, that's fine. I'm, I'm a shit ass. <laughs> Well, it's right here on Disney Plus. You can make it up by watching Carol beat the shit oh, out I, of the scrolls. I, I've seen it like four <laughs> times already. I, it's an incredibly enjoyable movie. Yeah. But again, much like a lot of the others, other than Avengers, I hadn't seen watch any of the fucking Ant Man movies either when they came out until they hit streaming. So yeah. But I, and that's another one. Like until I would have rented one of that. the major Marvel yeah. movies. Yeah. Right. But so I I don't know. Also, uh, as a as a throwaway to this, I think it's fucking ridiculous that Disney Plus doesn't have all of the Marvel movies so that you can watch them in chronological order. Yeah, uh, fucking Infinity War is still not on there. Endgame is on there, but Infinity War is still not on there. It's weird. It's fucking weird. It's licensing shit. Ugh, that's weird. Also, the Spider Man uh, movies aren't on there. Sony shit. Yeah, it's Sony because uh, <sighs> Incredible Hulk isn't on there either. God damn it. God damn it. <laughs> I mean, in all fairness, I get it. I wouldn't want to show the Ed Norton one either, but is the seventies, uh, incredible Hulk on Disney plus no. with no, the, no. Also, they don't have Japanese Spider-Man and that's a travesty. Come on guys. <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck? Yeah. The fuck? Now, now's the time to, for Disney. Somebody needs to just like, kick open the the vault with disney yeah well all right jamie i think it's time to wrap it up uh the thing i would uh suggest to people uh is use this time wisely and go watch gravity falls <laughs> that's that's my advice to you <laughs> it's so good and so much fun i'll check that out uh, I yeah, it's it, a hell I'll of a lot of fun. Out. <laughs> yeah, it, it's super enjoyable and kid appropriate and really well written. And yeah, I, yeah, and uh, there's a reason why I named my dog after one of the greatest characters named Seuss. Oh. So, uh, Grunkle stand for life, kids. That's that's my stance. <laughs> mm. um, all right, uh, Jamie, where can they find you, sir? Well, uh, you can find us here on YouTube, on Facebook, and uh, at uh, Hard Knock Media. Did you know, Brandon, we have been invited to a Hard Knock Media Zoom call on Saturday, and I, I think they're going to be using it for something. I think, I don't know. I think Keith said that they're going to like put it up on one of their channels or something. So we're going to be part of the whole network. We get to see okay. our, our did, fellow cast. Out of curiosity, did, did, they, did they email the podcast email? Or did they just email you? Because I don't actually know if they want me on it. <laughs> They just gonna, gonna throw that on there. Like, <laughs> I know they're gonna I'm, grandfather me in on I'm this bringing show, you along. But I'm bringing you along. I'm bringing, bringing you along, along, motherfucker. You're bringing, you, wow. bringing you along. <laughs> we are intersectional. I'm bringing you along. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just, yeah, I, I can, I can hear this now of just like there being a message to be like. Yo, Jamie. Um, hey, so is there any way that Brand could like get laryngitis or something like that and not be there on Saturday? Like, no offense, but it is the hard knock media, and uh, <laughs> just gonna you'll, throw that out there. You'll know just as many people as I will. You'll know Keith, and you'll know Patrick, and that's it. Those are the. No, only I, it's not a question about knowing other people. It's that when you talk about nerds of color, unless you're talking about my commentary, <laughs> there there is no color to be had. Like, I get the idea that in that in you know poorly educated parts of northern Pennsylvania, I've been mistaken for Latino, but that's not <laughs> that ain't that doesn't count. Like it's just you know. This this beard and a nice tan does not a, a nerd of color make like it just it doesn't. Well, you might see us. <laughs> you might see both of us on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you might see you us. Might see, you might see us. You might see we, us. <laughs> our podcast will be represented on that. <laughs> <laughs> Whether it's both both co-hosts or just the one co-host, <laughs> we will be represented there. <laughs> I wouldn't invite me in all fairness. So that's, that's totally fair. Uh, Brandon, where can people find you? 
You can find me on Instagram at that guy Chalmers, and uh, I will. I, I'm making a pledge now. I'm going to start prepping for it at the moment. Uh, I will be making daily posts for Maymoa, um, a, a international, uh, you know, appreciation of Jason Momoa. Uh, and you said it is uh, once again. May is. Pacific Asian, Islander, Asian, Asian Pacific American Island? Pacific Islander uh, Appreciation Month. So yes, so let's let's absolutely do that. So Jamie, you said you're going to get together a drawing prompt, but if you <laughs> are artistically inclined, uh, like declined, like myself currently, uh, just because I'm out of practice, and you know I'll make a bunch of excuses, and I'll only have the ability to post photos, post photos, post videos. Let's appreciate the man mountain that is Momoa. Memoa. Yes. Yep. All right. Yeah. Yep. Bye, bye, friends. Bye, friends. Bye, kids. I don't want to see any any posts of Dwayne Johnson. He gets Rocktober. Okay. Like that. <laughs> nice. This is Memoa. Memoa Rocktober. All right. Bye. Yeah. Bye, kids. <laughs>